the next thing that we want to talk about, item number three on our list of, of 10 new stream uh, features is the editing and viewing mode. This is something that you know, you've know you probably seen up in the top corner, but we haven't talked about it yet. Everything I've been doing so far has been in the edit mode. And you might be wondering like, what's the point of like switching back and forth? Essentially what Microsoft has given us is the ability to see a video as your audience would see it. I think that would be, you know, really beneficial, especially to like communications teams where they want to know what buttons are going to show, what does it look like to a normal person? So if I toggle this at the top where it says editing, I can go down to viewing and you'll see that the video changes and right? So this tells me that my audience can see the analytics, they can see the comments, obviously they can see and search the transcript, and they can see the chapters. But if I go into edit mode, this is where I can make changes. Now we are going to talk about like the trim here in a little bit, but trim shows up, interactivity we'll talk about as well, but I can add things to the video, I can change the video, and I can turn on and off different features. One thing you noticed was when I was in the viewing area, I had analytics showing right here. You might not want your your viewers to be able to see the ups and downs of your uh, watch, you know, viewing. So if you go to editing and then go into video settings, you can actually turn off those analytics and now that won't show. So if you're like, well, I don't want people leaving comments because like, you know, I'm gonna post this on Viva Engage. I want the comments to be in engage. I don't want the analytics to show for whatever reason. I've turned those off. I flip back over to viewing and now I can see that like I only have chapters and transcript. So you're you're adjusting what your users can do with your video and um and then you can like kind of control what you see or don't see. So that is the new toggle between editing and viewing. Um, the other thing that's an edit mode, whenever you're in, you're not in viewing, you can see that like also you can like, you can make a new video, upload a new video. You can favorite this one or add it to a playlist and then you can download it, but you can't do anything like destructive to the video, like move it to a new place, delete it, things like that. If you go to edit mode, you get more capabilities across the top as well which is I can put it in a different spot, in a different SharePoint site, for instance. I can copy it to another place, or I can click Edit in ClipChamp. And what that does is it creates a, a project folder for this particular file in the same uh, folder where the video originally existed. It's just going to create a new folder that is a project, and it's importing that to our video. So I can start you know, cutting it up, adding annotations, do all that. Um, one thing when we talk about editing in ClipChamp is when you edit it, it doesn't share back, it doesn't save back to the original video. You will have to go export it and you'll want to export that over the top of the existing video. Um, yeah, yeah, like she, she said here, if you export that, do the chapters. So that metadata stuff like chapters and transcript and all that, it will not come with it you would re-enable those features with the new version of the video when you uh, do that. Now, the yeah, other thing that we'll talk really, about soon, which is that's really important to emphasize on that. Yeah. Though, like we're going to get into like trimming and editing and you mm -hmm. know, there's some nuances. There's some, there's some definite differences there, but if you go from stream over into clip champ, you are going to lose some of that metadata, like your chapter markers, and you're going to have to go back and maybe redo some of that after the fact. John, can you go back to the stream uh, tab that you had open before you went? Yeah, to the camp? Um, in just a second to get like a little bit deeper dive into it. When you created this, when I clicked edit in ClipChamp, the reason why it doesn't pull those chapters and transcript with it is because um, it, it essentially turned the video, it downloaded the video to my computer as like a standalone file. So in my downloads folder now, I've got that available and, and I'm editing it locally until I click export. And then I, I would be saving it back to the cloud. As far as SharePoint is concerned, that's a new file. So that's why it wouldn't carry that yeah. stuff with it. So here's the stream tab again. Now, I just wanted to point out here though, um, 
like depending on how the the video was created like whether maybe you know you uploaded it to your one drive or maybe it's a mm -hmm. team's media recording or maybe you recorded with stream um in the web browser um when you're here and you're working with like the move to and the copy to if you're mm -hmm. if you're like moving it or relocating it then uh it will pull and uh, send that information over with it so it yeah. will send the chapter marking the transcript over with it so you won't lose that 